Have you, have you guys enjoyed the day? <laughs> I don't know if my wife, Shaitra, is around, but um, uh, she may be in the back. Um, this is personal to me. Um, Phil uh, Griffin is the CEO, was a CEO. This is the least important thing that you should know. He was the president of MSNBC prior to Rashida Jones, who you met earlier. Here's what's important. Relationship capital. A guy named Philippe Bourguignon, French, I met him because I went to go give a conference, a speech in Germany years ago. I didn't want to go. It was an, it was an irritant, it was a, but it was a favor to somebody. I went to this little small town, gave a speech, and I tried to find something positive for me in this conference where everybody's speaking German. And I met this guy named Philippe Bourguignon, and he and I became friends. And I, and I found out he was a uh, co-chairman of the World Economic Forum, and I wanted this to be like that. So I asked him to be on my board and help to create this as the urban version of the Davos meeting in Switzerland. He said yes to that. Through Philippe Bourguignon, I met a friend named Phil Griffin. Phil Griffin, president of MSNBC. We talk, we have a good relationship, we get to know each other. Um, and through Phil Griffin, I meet Tom Brokaw. I meet Tom Brokaw and I say, Tom, will you come and speak at our Hope Global Forum? For which Philippe Bourguignon and now Phil Griffin are both co-chairing. See how I'm doing this? Little by little. Tom Brokaw comes to the conference. I think this is 2017, 2018. Um, and as we're walking out, Ambassador Young has this great quote, coincidence is God's way of remaining anonymous. We're walking out on stage just like this. As we're walking out on stage with Tom Brokaw and, and, and uh, Phil and Philippe, Tom Brokaw leans over to me and I'm saying, Tom, I'm so honored to have you here, oh my God. And the reason that Tom Brokaw came is because he knew that Ambassador Andrew Young was a co-chair. He didn't know me from anything, but he trusted that if Ambassador Young was there, he trusted me. So I guess in a short period of time, Tom Brokaw decided he did not not like me, and maybe he liked me a little bit. We walk out on stage, Tom Brokaw whispered in my ear when I said, what can I do to help you, or if there's anything I can do to help you, he says, yes, come speak for me at a conference. I said, when is it? We're walking out. He says it's um, July, I think it was 8th. And I said, I can't do that. I'm getting married on July the 7th. And he said, well, come after you get married. I said, this dude's got hootsbook. So I said, well, I can't say, I can't say that. I can't, you got to ask my wife. Where's your wife? Well, she's right behind you. So he turns, sorry, it's my fiance there. So he turns to Shaitra and says, well, can you come to, can he come speak after you get married? And she said, well, where is it? And he said, Sun Valley. She said, done. I didn't know where Sun Valley was. I guess it's a great skiing place. I don't relax. Uh, so I didn't know about skiing. So I said, yes, to go to Sun Valley. So we get married, and the next day, we get on a plane and take plane, train, automobile, get to Sun Valley, and I'm clueless. And we, we, um, we check in the hotel, it's an inn, because the hotel was already packed out, and the inn was next to it, and there was no running hot water, and we had twin beds. <laughs> and it just, we just got married. You starting to get this visual? So I called the front desk, and I said, this is not going to work. <laughs> I'm honored to be here, glad to do it. I'm speaking for free. Uh, there's, there are limits to my, my graciousness, I guess. I need, a, I need a queen bed, preferably a king bed, and it'd be nice if I had some running hot water. I mean, y'all rich people, can't y'all figure this out? And I said, I'm so sorry, Mr. Bryan, we, the water we can't solve right now for you, but we can move you about a mile down the road if you want a queen bed. I said, you know what? Let me just calm down for a minute. You know, my, by the way, my wife's saying, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I said, okay, let me calm down for a minute. Let me just go register for this conference, figure out what it is, and um, I'll decide when it's I come back from registering. So I... God is my witness. I'm not exaggerating one iota here. I walk out the front door. Now, mind you, my hot water 
is, the, is tied to the bathroom. The bathroom is on this wall here. I walk out the door, I turn right. Coming out the other door mean that they are sharing my plumbing. You follow me? They have no hot water either. either. I turn right. The guy's coming out the door is Warren Buffett. I turned around, went back in the room, called the front desk. I said, this room will be just fine. <laughs> I stalked that man <laughs> every day when I heard the plumbing click, click. Ten minutes later, I'm at the door waiting to come out. We called the elevator up, down, went to the conference together, became bosom buzzy buddies. Chasia became girlfriends with his girlfriend. They were knitting together, I don't know, something. <laughs> so, so I'm like, so I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to speak at this conference, and um, I'm going, it's 7 in the morning. Nobody's going to be at this conference at 7 in the morning. I'm sure their assistant's going to be there. There'll be 30 people. I don't know, I just met Warren Buffett, I could care less. I show up at seven in the morning and there are 500 of the most powerful people on the planet in the audience. The Zucker, Mark Zuckerberg, the Buffett family, the Murdoch family. I mean, it just went on and on and on. Unbelievable. Unlocked it all. Unlocked it all because I said yes. I found a way to say yes, but I didn't do it by myself. I had somebody. I'm not going to do it again. I got emotional yesterday. We none of us get here by ourselves. You follow me? We all need somebody. I believe in the James Brown version of affirmative action. Open the door, I'll get it myself. But somebody has to open the door. If I could rename this award, to Phil Griffin, I call it the 30-year Open the Door Award. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in saying thank you to Phil Griffin. <laughs> and, he, and he broke his shoulder picking up all the money. Get this man a TV show. <laughs> That is unbelievable. Um, thank you, John. That was a great introduction. <laughs> I talked to Mr. Brokaw before I came down. He sends, your sends him your best and to this group the best. He loves you. We all know why he loves John. There's nobody who speaks better than he, and I swear to God he will have a TV show out of this. Um, I'm honored to get this award um, and to be a small part of what you've accomplished over the last 30 years. This is my last speech, the last event. John, I've known you for a long time and I've been part of this, but what you've done is impressive. And what you've done, Kevin, and what everyone who works at Operation Hope, and what everyone who has been part of this movement has done. And it has not been an easy task. These past 30 years have been complicated in America, as have really the last 246 years in America. America is an idea. All people are created equal. We have unalienable rights, among them life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And that idea, that idea has always been in conflict by the way we have lived and governed. But from the beginning, from our very beginnings, we've always had leaders who devote themselves to that special idea of America. John, you are one of those bold leaders. Really, one of the doers who is committed to making that dream of America come true. You've all heard them now, we know the numbers. Operation Hope now has 200 offices throughout the country. 200, when we began, there were a few in the South. There are now 200. Operation Hope has given more than $3 billion to low-income communities. Operation Hope has been the catalyst for the creation of hundreds of thousands of small businesses, empowered millions of adults by giving them financial literacy, raising their credit scores, 
and making the American dream attainable. And Operation Hope, through this forum, has focused on the underserved and is now in more, has helped more than 40 countries around the world. That's so great. That is amazing. It is such an achievement. John, I've known you. This is amazing. You've inspired us all. You've helped us understand we need to make this economy work for everyone. Now, I was reminded of the mission of Operation Hope and the success of John and his team when I was recently in Italy this past September. I came across a speech delivered by Pope Francis to a group of young adults in Assisi. His message was about change. But of all things, it was about the economy. He encouraged those young adults to commit themselves to making an economy that is, quote, life-giving, not one that is life-killing. Life-giving, not life-killing. I recommend you read his speech. It was de delivered on September 24th this year. In part, he says, we need an economy that cares for creation and does not misuse it. We need an economy who cares where care replaces rejection and indifference. We need an economy that leaves no one behind. We need an economy where finance is a friend and ally of the real economy and of labor and not against them. We need an economy that fights poverty in all its forms, reduces inequality. We need an economy, uh, uh, we need an economy that creates wealth for all, that engenders joy and not just riches, because happiness that is not shared is incomplete. He goes on at the end of this speech to the kids in Assis to say, we believe in this economy. It is not a utopia because we are already building it. Mm. And some of us on particularly bright mornings have already glimpsed the beginnings of the promised land. As I said, that was Pope Francis. John, I'm glad I've gotten to know you. Pope Francis could have been talking about you. Mm. You've made lives better, mm. the world a better place. Because of your leadership, because of Operation Hope, we are beginning to see the promised land. Thank you for what you have done and congratulations on 30 years of commitment and success. Thank you. We, 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 you know we must love Phil Griffin because we don't allow anybody to read speeches. So uh, <laughs> we love you. No, that was very, that was very heartfelt. And I'm seriously, I, I'm, I am me in part because you helped help me get there. I appreciate that. And this audience showed their appreciation and love for you. We're coming in the home stretch, and this was uh, no better way to salute that. Uh, I, uh, I'm just very thankful. All right. Well, well thank you. And you deserve it. And I'll tell you, when he went over there, he came back from that first meeting, and he wrote every one of those people, and he followed up, and he met with them, and obviously you charmed them, and I'm so glad it's worked out. So thank you, and thank you, everybody. Amen. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. It's coming right back.